Hey guys, this is just a quick video. I uh, wanted to offer some assistance with the homework. And I know, I know that when you when you are exposed to something new, it can be it can be scary, it can be challenging and you're trying to remember everything and also do it and, and I, I just want you to know I remember feeling uh, kind of that trembling sense of anxiety that man I don't understand this and this guy wants me to do this by tomorrow so I wanted to try to help you a little bit if I could on some of this homework because ultimately I mean the point of the homework is not just to torture you the point of the homework is to try to give you some time that you can practice what you learn in class because it's actually this time when you're doing the homework that the learning occurs that first exposure in class, I mean, that's just kind of an opener, right? So let's dive in here and see what, what are we supposed to do? Well, we are going to be solving the systems of equations. Okay, so we have to solve the system. And this is a system. Two or more equations together is a system. Okay. And in order to do that, by graphing because that's the way we're learning it today, is by graphing, we actually have to draw a graph that represents these equations. Okay? So how do you graph an equation? Well, the first thing is to make sure that it is in this form where the y is all by itself on the left side, then you got the equal sign, and then there's some number or fraction, or you assume that there's a one there if there's no number, and then there's an X, and then there's some sign, either plus or minus, and then there's another number. And that's called slope-intercept form. So this number sitting in front of the X, that's called the slope, and we call that letter M. Okay, and then we have the Y-intercept. This is where the line hits the Y-axis, okay, and that's what we call letter B. So the full slope-intercept form is, where am I going to write this? is up here, I'll write y equals mx plus b. Okay, so to graph the line, you've got to know what m is and you've got to know what b is. So both of these equations will have an m and a b. Okay, and that's really what we've got to figure out first. What is m and what is b? Well, in this equation, m is two-thirds. Okay, so that's two thirds for the first equation. And what is b? Well, if you look over here to the right of the x, you just have this minus 1. So b is negative 1, because you include that sign. It's confusing, because here we would say 2 thirds x minus 1, but over here I'm telling you to call that symbol negative 1. And it's just confusing. You know, I wish they would have designed math better. Okay, so for the first equation, which I'm going to do in red, I'm going to do this first equation right here in red. We have a slope of two-thirds, which we'll get to in a second, but we're going to start with this y-intercept at negative one. So go to your graph and put your pen down on the origin or your pencil down on the origin point here where these big dark lines intersect. And now just go down one box, okay, down to that first row below the x-axis and put a dot there. And that dot is the y-intercept. Okay, so that's negative 1. Right? And now what we're going to do is use this slope, this slope of 2 thirds right here. We're going to use that because slope m, 2 over 3, can be interpreted as rise over run. What that means is I'm going to go from my y-intercept or from any point on the line, I'll go up to and then I'll go over 3. And then wherever your pen lands, that's another point on the line. So let's go back to negative 1 here. The slope is 2 thirds, so that means I go up 2, 1, 2, over 3, 1, 2, 3. And here I've landed right here on this intersection right there. I'm going to put another dot. Now put your pen on that new dot that you drew and do it again. Up 2, over 3. Okay, and there's another point on that line right here. Okay, now what I was doing in other video, 
other videos is I was going backwards. So just as you can go up two and then three to the right, you can go back to your point and go down two and three to the left. And it makes kind of visual sense that you can see that if you do it that way, that point will also line up. And you can do it again. Go to that new point, down two, three to the left. And once you've got, I don't know, three, four points on the, you really only need two, but once you've got three, four points plotted, you can really graph in a perfectly straight line that's going to pass through all the right points on the graph. So just line up your points, take your straight edge, press down hard so it doesn't slip when you see, see how it slipped? Press down hard so it doesn't slip, and then take your pen and draw you in a, a line like this, or pencil, you should be using a pencil. What if you make a mistake, right? And that's that line. That's this line. Y equals 2 thirds X minus 1. That's what it looks like when it's graphed. Now we'll do the next line. Y equals negative X plus 4. Okay? We'll do that one. We have to identify what the slope is. So here we've got this problem. It's too hard to see on the camera. You have a negative sign in front of an X. What the heck is the slope when there's a negative sign in front of the X? Because there's no number. Well, you understand that there's always a 1 just sitting there, okay? So it's negative 1. That's the slope, negative 1. What's the y-intercept? The y-intercept is positive 4, all right? So let's do the easy part first. Let's go to 4 here on this vertical axis. This is the y-axis. Start at the origin and count up rows 1, 2, 3, four and just put a dot right there that's the y-intercept at four and now we got to figure out what to do with this slope of m equals negative one okay we it's hard to look at that and see rise over run because it's not a fraction but we can turn it into a fraction so the thing to remember is that negative one or any whole number can always be written as that whole number over one. So what I'm going to do is write a little tiny negative one right here and then put a fraction bar and write a one. Okay, so now this does look like rise over run. I have a rise of negative one and because that doesn't make any sense, that's why we call it a fall. And then I have a run of one. So it's going to be wherever I'm at with my pen, I'm going to go down one and then over one to the right. So let's go, let's take this information and go back to the y-axis and go down one from four, down one, and then one to the right, put a dot. Okay? You're going to have to do this several times. Keep doing it until you've crossed this red line, okay? or your line. Down one, get back to this new point, down one, one to the right. Down one, one to the right. Bingo, that's where they cross. Down one, one to the right. Down one, one to the right. Okay, just like this, until you've kind of plotted in and you can start to see the idea, you're just going to hop diagonally like this. Once you've got that line dotted in, you can go in with your straight edge, line everything up, press down so it doesn't slip, and draw in the line. Okay. And what's nice about this one is it's very clear where they cross, where they intersect. This point right here, this is the solution to the system. So what we need to find are the coordinates at this point. What are the coordinates right here? Well, the way we find the x coordinate, because this is going to be x comma y. That's how coordinates are written. So here I'll start at the origin okay, and just count over until I'm underneath that dot. One, two, three. Okay, let's check it again. Origin, one, two, three. Yep, I'm right underneath that dot. So on the x-axis, I have to go over three to the right. So positive three is the x component of the solution to the system of equations. Now how about that y component? Here I'm going to be on the y-axis. I'll go up until my pen is just to the left of that dot. So starting at the origin, I go up one. Bingo, I'm right there. I'm on the same row as that, as that intersection point. So 1, positive 1, is the y component of 
this coordinate pair. So the solution to the system of linear equations that you'll put in a box is 3 comma 1. Just put that in a box like that. And that's how, you, that's how you do it when the problems have already been solved for y. Okay, so maybe in another video, um, I can show you how to solve problems where they're not solved for y already. Because there's other steps that you have to do first. But if it's just the issue, if it's just an issue of, of, of graphing it, once you've got it in, 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 in this form that's easy to graph, this is how you do it. Okay, so I'm going to end this video here so it doesn't get too long. Uh, and then in a future video, I'll try to show you uh, more mechanically how to do this when the problems look really scary, like down here in number four. Because there is some work that we have to do before we can do everything we just did here. All right, but I'll stop the video here and make another video.